While providing lenses and advanced optical systems to NASA for their virtual reality experiments, this man decided to try his hand at his own head-mounted display for VR. But who is he? And what exactly is the cyberface? Let my trademark in expressive tones explain all. Immersed Robot Eric Howlett was born in 1926 in Miami, Florida, and raised on Long Island, New York. He graduated from MIT in 1949 and went on to work at various technology-based corporations. Howlett invented a uniquely wide-angle stereoscopic photographic and optical system in 1978 and patented the device under the trade name, LEAP. This stood for Large Expanse, Extra Perspective. This system consisted of a specially designed camera to capture stereoscopic images, with a viewer portion to accurately observe them. Due to the complexity and expense of manufacturing the camera part of the system, Leap decided to focus exclusively on the viewers. In 1985, a NASA Ames engineer heard about the viewer and went over to Leap in order to see it for himself. The engineer was impressed and told Howlett about the NASA Views system which they were working with at that time. VIEWS stands for Virtual Interface Environment Workstation, and the particular area of study within the aforementioned Ames NASA department was human-computer interaction methods. NASA were primarily using their own devices at this time, while also starting to experiment with hardware, such as the data glove and data suit from VPL. I covered the story of VPL and Jaron Lanier in part 2 of this series. Based on what the engineer saw of the LEAP viewers, NASA began to order units and they also informed VPL of the device. NASA continued to use the specially designed lenses along with VPL in their newer head-mounted displays throughout the 80s. A little later, while talking with one of the NASA engineers on the phone, Howlett found out about the market for fully featured virtual reality head-mounted displays. He recalls that he said to the NASA engineer, quote, you mean to say, if I made a system like the ones VPL makes, I could sell it for over $10,000, end quote. This directly led to Howlett pushing resources into creating a head-mounted display, which he called the Cyberface. The first version of Cyberface used the Leap Lens technology and has stereoscopic monochromatic displays, identical to those used in NASA's and VPL's systems. It was released commercially in March of 1989 and became the first commercially available virtual reality head-mounted display. In spite of poor sales, Howlett and Leap pushed on with improving the device quickly. Cyberface 2 was the resulting product which allowed for two higher resolution, full-color panels. The higher resolution was still quite limited at 385 by 119 pixels per eye, but these LCD displays were enough to sell the premise. The Cyberface 2 also had a wider field of view at around 145 degrees and binaural audio, as well as the optional Freedom Arm mounting device to help with comfort and weight. The increase in field of view is helped by the large lenses, but also by using the same canting method we see on ultra-wide FOV headsets today, such as the Pimax. The Cyberface 1 and 2 were really designed, along with some of NASA's experimentation, for telepresence applications and primarily envisioned for use with laboratory and field use cases. In order to achieve this, another stereoscopic device was of course required to capture the remotely located scenes. This would be called the Telehead and consisted of two cameras in a handheld unit. During this period, other companies aside from VPL and NASA were utilizing Leap's innovations in optics. One notable headset was Virtual Research's Flight Helmet. This cumbersome-looking device featured color LCD displays with a resolution of 360 by 240, Sony stereo headphones, 3D head tracking and, no doubt, neck injury. Another iteration of Cyberface would follow next, and version 3 would boast a full-color display, running at a resolution of 720 by 240 far exceeding previous virtual reality systems at that time. However, this time, the system was designed for non-stereo applications and was used primarily for single-display entertainment, architecture, education and training applications. Again, the Leap Freedom Arm Counter Balanced Mount for the headset would be employed in making this device usable. Around 1995, Leap created a device based on a higher resolution version of the Cyberface 3, called the Virtual Orbiter. The hardware inside was actually referred to as the Cyberface 4, and once again it was supported by a large counter-balanced arm. 
The Virtual Orbiter was a single-purpose unit which allowed users to experience a virtual reality spacewalk. It was originally planned to be the first in a series of these types of experiences, but no others were made. The Virtual Orbiter was a stand-up device where the users walk up and move the supported display by using the handles on the side. It was first shown at the 1995 VR show in Boston and at various other trade events through 1996. In 2006, Howlett went on to co-found Leap VR with his son, which continued to focus on virtual reality systems and applications. Unfortunately in 2011, Howlett passed away, while still maintaining a strong interest in the technology. While Howlett's name seems to only be a passing mention in the world of VR, standing firmly in the shadow of other pioneers such as Jaron Lanier and Ivan Sutherland, it is plain to see the contribution he made to the first commercial steps of the industry. The technologies and headsets he helped to create are a fascinating milestone on the path to modern-day VR. Thank you for watching and look out for more episodes in this series coming soon. Well that's pretty much it for this video. Please hesitantly tap the like button and don't forget to subscribe for more concise and informative VR content. You can also join our Discord by clicking on the link in the description of this video. And, as always, I'll catch you on the flippity flip.